Howdy, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to another episode of uh, What Happened to Your Face? What happened to your face? This is the series in which I wear a look out for a night, and I come back and I tell you what happened to my face. Tonight, I wore a mask. I went out to my first masquerade ball, my first masked ball. It was at Music Box Village. It was presented by New Orleans Airlift. Music Box Village is this kind of like magical musical playland that is like a, a little mini village made of garbage and scrap metal and every little house is like a musical instrument where you can play them and it's like insane it's like an only in new orleans type thing it's created by this organization called new orleans airlift and they do all kinds of like music and technology related things they're doing this massive like boat orchestra thing on Lake Pontchartrain, which is the big lake near here. So this was kind of like a fundraiser for that project. They're also really into like raising uh, awareness about the coastal crisis happening in Louisiana. This was like a ball that was a fundraiser for all of that fabulous amazing stuff that happens. Anyway, it was amazing. It was like an underwater theme. The theme was Sirens of the Shallows. So I rocked this kind of like crazy Ariel like on a fancy date look. I also made a swamp monster onesie with big googly eyes for my boyfriend. And it was an amazing event. Big Frida performed. This amazing new rapper Delish performed. There was just like amazing stuff that it was fabulous. It was like amazing, 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 amazing event. I wore a mask, obviously. So masks were required. In preparation for this, I was like, what the hell makeup do I wear under? Like I'm a drag queen. I have to like, I exist. My face is who I am, right? So like, how do I exist without half of my face? And I was, of course, Googled what, how do you wear makeup under a mask for a masquerade ball? And of course, there's like an Allure article. And they talked about doing like a smoky eye and so it's like kind of deepens your eyes, so like really makes them pop because that's like all you can see with the mask. And you know, do an awesome lip. So I did the awesome lip. I don't know if I really succeeded with the eye, but they were also like, do your full face of makeup anyway, because eventually you're gonna take your mask off, so you're gonna wanna look like a person underneath it. I didn't take my mask off tonight, but I still did my full face. I didn't take that much time doing it, so be warned. I have not taken my mask off yet until this very moment. I'm gonna take off the big ring so it doesn't get stuck in my hair. Oh, are you maybe noticing some <gasps> beautiful nails? Does anyone want a tutorial on this? Let me know because I will happily recreate this look. All right, ready? Here we go. I'm gonna take the mask off for the first time since I left my house. I don't even know what happened to this face. We're gonna find out together. Ready? Drum roll, please. Uh-oh. Okay, ready? Oh my god! Holy shit! What? It's still there! My face is still there! Yay! Oh my god, I'm so happy! Okay, I mean, I'm a little, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna dab a little bit. Look, you can see how much I'm sweating and still my face, oh my god, it worked! I did exactly what the Allure article said, it was like, use your like, ma like oil reducing primer and whatever, like use all of your like makeup longevity stuff that you have. And I did, I used my Becca Mattifying Poreless Priming Perfector. I used my Lorac Porefection Silicone Smoothing Primer. I even used the Scandinavia Priming Mist before both of those. And then I topped everything off with Blue Marble Setting Spray. And holy fuck, are you kidding? This looks amazing. <gasps> I'm really impressed with my, this is amazing. I didn't do a red brow because that just takes longer to get the actual like tone right and everything. I just did a black, I was like, I'm not gonna, why should I even have brows? I put on a brow for you. I knew I would be a lot more easy to look at if I had a brow on when I took this mask off when I got home for you. So the eye makeup that held up 
underneath a mask all night. The lid is a combo of a lime crime shade, a purple shade from the De Antoinette palette, which I talked about in my last anti haul. I mentioned it comparing it to the Pastel Goth palette, but then I topped it off with some Kat Von D purpley shimmery eyeshadows from the Chrysalis palette, which I love. But I wanted to show you this. On the inner corner, I used my NARS. I love this. It's Opal Coast. It was a limited edition hardwired, I think it's called hardwired eyeshadow. It's just like a beautiful shimmery white like ice eyeshadow and I love this for like just highlighting the inner corner. Obviously the nose has worn down quite a bit because my mask, where did it go? I don't know where it even went. Oh here. My mask was uh, touching my nose. Oh look! And my brows. <laughs> a little bit of my blush came off a little bit. I used the combo of the Too Faced Love Flush Blush in How Deep Is Your Love and the Milani Rose Powder Blush in Coral Cove. Just like a slightly deeper coral shade and a very bright coral shade. I did like a little bit of a blush ombre with these two. I thought it was great. I had to add some coral into the face because I'm wearing this fabulous coral dress from Trashy Diva. <gasps> Oh, look at this beautiful shelf bust. Isn't this gorgeous circle skirt? I, like, I, ugh. I love this store. It's fat. You can order online. They didn't give me this dress for free. I bought it. It was on sale, but I bought it. Like, oh my God. But I needed, I knew I was going to do a purple eye. I had this like lavender bra thing that I made. I made a lavender crinoline for it. So I knew I wanted to do like lavender coral combo. I asked you guys what color crinoline to make on uh, Instagram and you guys had amazing suggestions. I didn't, I followed none of them. Like I, <laughs> thank you for suggesting all the different colors of a crinoline to make, but I ended up making one that no one suggested, I think, lavender. I love this lavender coral combo. It's like such a, I love it. I even like started when I was like working on my beauty room, I like started incorporating lavender plus like a peachy coral situation into my decor, which you will see. I'm gonna film a beauty room tour. It's gonna happen. Don't worry. Anyway, but I'm like obsessed with this color combo. So this is all to say I wore coral blush because I knew that most of my makeup was going to be this lavender purple situation. I really feel like the coral blush helps offset some of that. I could have done like a purple blush, but then it would have been like all purple on the face plus the purple mask. Like a little bit of coral I think helped humanize me a little bit, make me look a little bit more alive. Anyway, love it. The highlight, <sighs> honestly, I can't tell if this is, no. I was gonna say I can't tell if this is grease or the highlight, no, it is the highlight because I'm shiny. You could see how I'm shiny on my nose, like around there, but look at this cheek. <gasps> girl, girl. I think I might have talked about this in previous videos. This is the Makeup Forever Star Powder, not the new Star Lit Powder. I have not tried that. This is their older formula. It's a loose powder. They have Star Powder and Diamond Powder. And now they have this new Star Lit Powder, which I can't, I don't even know what that is. I can't vouch for it. But Star Powder is just like a very shimmery, kind of loose, highlighty pigment. Diamond Powder, I think, has actual glitter in it. But this is just the Star Powder. It's just a pigment. The way I applied it today, I'm going I'm going to show you because I'm so obsessed with this. I feel like I've dabbled in this technique before, but I've never really tried it. This stuff is crazy powdery and when it's loose, it's just like insane. I'm gonna risk it all and do this for you. I'm taking this Morphe M509, a big fluffy tapered brush. I'm just going to dip it once like that. As you can see, a ton of product gets on there. I'm going to keep the brush very low to the pan and I'm just going to tap it to get some of that excess powder off. Trying to minimize how much falls on my, my vanity, but you can't help it with this stuff. It's just so crazy fine and crazy powder, like pigmented. Then I'm going to take my MAC Fix Plus or whatever setting spray, or you could use saline, you could use anything. I'm going to spray directly on top of the brush like this. And then watch, I'm just gonna apply it again to my cheek. It's, you can still see it, it looks amazing, but watch. Like, it's like liquid. <gasps> it's so stunning. 
it, you're literally, you're foiling it. You're foiling this pigment. This is exactly how you foil. But because normally with a foil, like foiled eyeshadow or something, you have to pack it on. But this, because it's so pigmented and so finely milled, you could use a big fluffy brush like this and use it wet and gah, girl. And as you can see, it lasted pretty well. I mean, I just amped it up like crazy. It faded a little bit from this to what you just saw. Girl, girl but like obsessed, obsessed. If you don't have this powder, this Makeup Forever powder, and you have just a loose shimmery eyeshadow or highlighter or anything, like a MAC pigment, like vanilla, a loose eyeshadow from like Shido Cosmetics or like some other like indie makeup brand, a highlight from Magnolia Makeup, for example. Any, anyway, there's plenty of companies out there that make loose, shimmery powders. It doesn't have to be this particular powder, but try this technique of dipping a fluffy brush in it, getting rid of all the excess, and then spritzing it directly with a saline solution or a finishing spray or something. And then look, you, you saw it like, oh, it's just like fabulous robot highlight. Oh, magic. Okay, that I can't rave enough. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. The lips. Let's talk about the lips. Finally, the lips. So on my lips, I'm wearing like 8 million things, of course. I'm wearing two lip pencils from ColourPop in the shades Grind and Brills. They're kind of like my go-to combo for a purple lip. Grind is a deeper purple shade, and it has a little bit more pink in it. That's what you can kind of see around the outsides of my lips. Brills is a little bit more like bluish lavender. You know these like they, the things pop out in them. I still use them. I love them. But this is Brills and Grind. Anyway, but they're ombre lip liners. And then I top them off with two different lipsticks. I use this Matte Glam by Milani. Just like this fabulous like purple, ugh, just gorgeous, gorgeous shade. That's all over my lips. And then in the center of my lips, I use this new limited edition MAC shade. Flatter my fancy, f fancy my, f I actually don't know what it's called because I relabeled it. I like color coded all my MAC lipsticks and so it's FMF, but it's just like a cool, cooler lavender, like purple shade. I'm showing you the back of it because the front of it has my like lipstick that I was wearing. So I did that ombre. Then, here's the thing I think that made the look, actually, is I topped it off with this lip tar from OCC in the shade Rhyme. R-I-M-E, as in Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. And it is just this beautiful iridescent sea foam shade with like a gold shift. It's kind of worn away a little bit. I reapplied it once during the night and it just created this amazing dimensional I'm gonna put more of this on just because I want you to see what this color looks like. Yeah, look at that. It's like iridescent seafoam green. I Again, the OCC lip tars, I don't, they're not matte. Like, even if they say they're matte, they're not. You have to like blot them in order to make them matte. And I don't think they're particularly long wearing. So I wasn't expecting my lipstick to last as long as like a liquid lipstick would last. But I, it, I am happy with how it held up. And honestly, up until like the end of the night, people were like, oh my God, your lipstick's amazing. Like, so I feel like I was, I was impressed with how it lasted regardless. I am like, I can't even believe that this is my face. Like I'm looking at it now and I mean, look, there's some breaking, it's breaking down there because I was, my nose is running because this shit was pressed up against it all night and it made my sinuses all weird. And I feel like I say it in almost all of these videos, like the, the drag queen trifecta of like cream color, powder color, set it with a setting spray. Like that, it worked. Like I use like just the makeup that I always wear and oh my God, it lasted fabulous. That's what happened to my face. Under a mask. Can you believe it? Oh, look at the little eyebrows. I'm Kimberly Clark. Thank you so much for watching. Please uh, check out my other videos. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. These videos happen because of you. Tell me about, have you ever been to a masquerade ball before? And if so, how have you worn your makeup? Do you have any tips? to how to wear makeup under a mask and then at the end of the night take it off and have it still look this freaking good? Jesus Christ. I am...
Uh, this is amazing. I'm amazed. I don't think I've ever been this amazed with my makeup. This fast eye look that I did with my crazy brows that don't match. But still, wow. Wow. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with myself. I'm Kimberly Clark. Bye.